Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, you might actually not know that The Baker's Almanac is a blog as well as a YouTube channel. And the content is a little bit different than I share my blog. It's mostly just recipes and baking tips. But I started that blog back in February of 2019 and I honestly didn't really know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> Before that, I like basically read through lots of blogs beforehand. I love to look at them for recipe inspiration, and I actually read some like interior design blogs and financial like literacy and things like that on the side just for fun. But a lot goes into blogging that I didn't realize. When it comes to baking, you're not just shooting pictures and throwing it up. You have to plan out the recipes you want to do, plan the photo shoots. Um, find time to test the recipes over and over again, write the posts, make pins for Pinterest, and the list goes on and on. So over the past year and a half or so, I've developed a lot of strategies that I found useful when it comes to organizing all of my content for my blog. That being said, everything that I do might not work for you. Basically, take this list and see what works for you, see what doesn't, and just get rid of what doesn't. I find myself to be more of a digital planner and organizer when it comes to my blog and YouTube content, but you might like just getting a pen and paper and doing it that way. That being said, in today's video, I'm going to take you onto my laptop and show you all of the organizational tips I have when it comes to planning out blog content and getting everything organized. So without further ado, let me show you how I plan all of my content for the Baker's Almanac. When it comes to organizing all my blog content, the main place that I like to do this is in Asana. And this is just a web a website, it's like an application that you can use for free. They do have a membership you can do where you pay, but the free one is honestly more than enough for what I need, so I just use that. Uh, and they also have an app that you can download for your phone, which I use occasionally. But I find Asana really helpful because over here you see there's different teams. Um, and so I'm just the only person on my team, but let's say you had an assistant or some full-time employees, you can easily invite them and then they'll be able to join your projects and you can assign tasks to them and things like that. In previous jobs that I've had, like normal um, jobs in other industries, we've actually used Asana for big scale projects and it's really helpful to kind of do some coordination and work together. But, so how I use Asana is I create a couple different, oops, I create a couple different areas here. And so I have one for blog posts, one for YouTube, and then one for ongoing tasks. But let me start in the blog post section to show you how I do it. So in Asana, you can look at it as a list or a board or a calendar. I like to start in the board area and I break it down with a couple different sections. First off, I have an idea backlog which has all the different um, like recipe ideas or post thoughts that I have that I want to share in my blog eventually. And whenever something pops into my head, I just kind of drop it in here. It doesn't mean that I'm going to write that blog post immediately, but this way I don't forget it and I always have some options to come back to if I'm drawing a blank for a new idea. And with Asana, the really great part is that you can drag things. So let's say I wanted to make this mimosa cake in 2020, I can drag it over here and then I can assign it to myself or to somebody else. And then I can choose a due date. So let's say this was going to be due next, um, next Thursday, for instance, I could assign it for July 30th. And then if you want, you can go in here and add like subtasks and things like that. I'm going to push it back just because I'm not actually making this one you can delete it. So this category then has all of my 2020 blog posts and this is what I've planned out for the rest of the year. And this does fluctuate just because I schedule something doesn't mean it's going to stay in like stone right there forever. But I do like to kind of have a general idea for what's coming soon. That way it keeps me on track. And something I like to do is create subtasks like I showed you before. So for instance, on this one for a s'mores tart, I have all of these different items I need to do before the post is finalized. And breaking it down like this just helps me remember all of the important things. Like for instance, I might have forgotten to make the pin on Canva if I hadn't written this. Um, I always make sure to check for SEO and readability in WordPress, so it's just really helpful to keep me on track. Once I start a blog post, I'm actually going to move it into the in progress over here. And then once it's done, I check it off and move it over to complete. And these are all of the blog posts that I finished back and back all the way back until when I first started my blog in 2019. So it's really cool to see how far I've come and how much I've accomplished. 
So that's how I use it for blog posts. Let me go into the YouTube tab to show you. So for YouTube, it's pretty similar. I have an idea backlog of videos I'd like to film, and then I have it broken down for 2020 videos and what I have planned out through the end of the year. And this one, I do pretty similar items with the, um, the subtasks, but they're just a bit different. So it's like filming the video, editing, finding music, thumbnail is really important, and then uploading. So for instance, this one is for tips and blogging and organization, which you're actually watching right now. So I'm gonna move that to in progress. And once I finish filming it, I'll be able to check off the film video portion. And once again, these are all my complete ones. And I forgot to show you this before, but you can actually look at the calendar view, which is super helpful. And here I can see that I have all of my YouTube videos planned out for Thursdays. And I can move things around accordingly if I wanted to. Like if I wanted to move this one to the 30th, I could drop it over here and move this back. Um, and then it will actually update in the board as well. So it's really helpful. And finally, the last section I have here under Asana is ongoing tasks. And I don't have a lot here, but I do want to flush this out more in the upcoming months. But these are just some items that I want to work on. Um, upcoming tasks are take new headshots for blog. Um, I just bought a new camera and I want to take some new ones that are a bit higher quality. So I'm planning to do that soon. And then in progress, I've been going back over my, all my old posts and updating the Pinterest pins just so that they're more cohesive and they look more in the style that I like and that way they have more traction on Pinterest. And this I've been doing kind of on an ongoing basis. So it's not quite done, but it's in progress. And then my completed tasks, looks like I don't have any, but once this is done, it'll show up there. So I do want to flush this out a bit more, but it's not quite as comprehensive as those other sections. So in terms of Asana, this is the main way that I use it. And this is the main place that I create my content calendar. And if you do have your own blog or YouTube channel, I highly recommend creating a content calendar like this, whether it's digitally with Asana or a tool like that, or you can do it in your planner or with a pen and paper. I personally like using Asana because it gives me flexibility to change dates to things if I wanna move it to a different date or even delete it just because certain times will come up in the week or when I want to test a recipe and I don't have all the ingredients or I just change my mind. So it's really helpful to have that flexibility with a digital planner like this. Moving away from Asana then, the other tool that I use a lot is this Things app. So this is a paid app that I have. Uh, I think it's just for uh, MacBooks or iPhones, um, but you can find something similar elsewhere. Uh, it's basically just like an app that I use to record everything in my life. So I write down what I need to buy when I'm shopping or what groceries I want. But down at the bottom, I have a couple sections for the Baker's Almanac. So first off, I have some post ideas and video ideas. And this kind of overlaps with what I had on Asana, but it's just some various ideas that I had if I'm out and about perhaps, so it just pops in my head and I just write it down. These ones, I don't know if I'm actually going to make them. So they're not really in Asana yet because it's still just kind of an idea floating in the abyss, <laughs> but it's nice to have it written down just in case I ever want to try them. And same with video ideas. Like for instance, I wrote down major life update working on this full time, which hasn't happened yet, but I'd love to one day. <laughs> and then the, the bottom two sections here that are really helpful to me is a someday maybe category. So these are just different tasks that I'd like to do at some point, but it's not super urgent right now. So for instance, register um, the Baker's Almanac as an LLC, make a business bank account, write an ebook, uh, things like that. This one, the switch to Genesis theme, I actually went ahead and did. So I'm gonna check that off. I haven't looked at this in a little bit. And then same thing for to buy. This is like not urgent, but these are items I'd love to buy eventually. So on my list is photography boards. I like to get some different colored photography boards just to make my photos pop a little bit more and look better. But uh, it's nice to have this list just so I can reference it when I'm deciding to make a purchase or move forward with that. So in terms of that, those are the main ways that I organize my content calendar and just plan out all my blog posts and videos. This will be a super individual process. Like you could try and do this like I do it, but it might not work for you. So do some testing, see what works well. 
Like I said, I found that doing this digitally works a lot more effectively for me than doing it in my planner. I have tried writing out all of my plans and content in my planner itself, but I find that I don't like having that rigidity and not being able to move things around. So yeah, that's kind of a quick overview of how I organize all of my content for the Baker's Almanac. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit different in terms of showing you behind the scenes of how this works, but this is the kind of content that I really wanted to have when I was first starting out. So I hope that it's helpful just to one person out there. If you did enjoy this video, it really helps support the channel if you hit the like button down below. It just helps other people find my content and grow this community here. And if you're not already, make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can stay tuned to, for future videos from me. I usually share baking tips and recipes and some vlogs here and there, so you'll want to stay tuned and not miss out on any future videos. I also share some behind the scenes content over on my Instagram, which is just the Baker's Almanac. I'll leave that up here if you want to go see it and also linked down below. But with all that being said, I think that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. Bye guys!